Hey everyone, it's Ali, and welcome to my channel, Cozies and Classics, where I talk about all things books, and I am so excited to be creating another video for you guys today. Today I will be giving you brief reviews of books 11 through 20 that I have read this year, and I will be honest, it has been quite a while since I've read books 11 through 20. I think I'm on book 33 of the year so far. So pretty behind with my 100 book goal. And if you wanna follow along with me in real time as I read throughout the year, definitely make sure to follow my Goodreads account, which is linked down below. But I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately about where I want this channel to go throughout the rest of the year and in the years to come. And I'm really excited because I have some vlogs planned of some bookstores, cozy days, cozy reads with me's, things like that. So I'll have some cozy videos coming out intermixed with my book reviews, so I really hope that you guys will enjoy those. So when I was gathering up all the books for this review, I remembered how I really enjoyed some of these and other ones I didn't as much. However, I feel I am a pretty generous reviewer as far as stars because I try to think about, okay, maybe I didn't personally love this book so much, but I can respect that it was well written and someone who loves this genre more than me will probably like this book. So with that being said, I did give all of these 10 books either four or five stars, but I will definitely walk you through the books in a little bit more detail, what I did and didn't like about some of them. And I will just put it out there as well. I am someone who frequents Goodwill and my Goodwills have books for either a dollar or two dollars, depending on paperback, hardback, whatever. And so I really like just picking up a random paperback off the shelf. I don't often read the backs of the books and too much detail. I really like going into books blind and I found some of my favorite books this way. Books that I would probably have never bought from Barnes & Noble or another bookstore or picked up at the library. So that's why I really do like grabbing books blind. However, that does lead me to read some books that I don't really like as much. So going into the review of the books, I do have six that I rated four stars. My personal favorite genre of books to read is historical fiction. I especially like like books that are set in like the 1900s or the late 1800s. But just wanted to put that out there so you can kind of understand why I may or may not have liked all the books that I will be reviewing. But I also do like a good suspense book, a good mystery book. I just like a good well-written story. I really appreciate authors that just write very well. So the first book that I read, book number 11 of the year and a book that I did rate four stars, was this 300 Days of Sun by Deborah Lawrenson, who is the best-selling author of The Lantern. Fun. <laughs> and I read this so long ago, I have to kind of remind myself what this one was about. Okay, so this is so fuzzy for me. I'm just gonna read the paragraph so you can kind of get a feel for it. Traveling to Faro, Portugal, journalist Joanna Millard hopes to escape an unsatisfying relationship and a stalled career. Faro is an enchanting town and the seaside views are enhanced by the company of Nathan Emberlin, a charismatic younger man, but Joanna soon realizes that behind the crumbling facades of Moorish buildings, Pharaoh has a seedy underbelly, its economy compromised by corruption and wartime spoils, and Nathan has an ulterior motive for seeking her company. He is determined to discover the truth involving a child's kidnapping that may have taken place on this dramatic coastline more than two decades ago. Okay, so I did enjoy this book. I didn't absolutely love it. I thought it was fine. And I remember when I was reading it that I thought this would be a really good miniseries. I know a lot of Harlan Coben's books have been made into miniseries, and I do actually have a Harlan Coben book in this four-star stack. But this is one that I think it was fine. Like I said, there really wasn't anything too remarkable about it. Like I said, I hardly remembered the plot at all. This is not one that I will personally keep or reread, but I would still recommend this. This story was unique and cool in the fact that there's kind of like a story within the story, which I did really enjoy. And I did say in my Goodreads review that it was quite predictable, but it had enough action to keep me interested. I did think that it was pretty well written, but you might not want to read it again or remember it for the rest of your life kind of thing. Okay, so next up is this book called The One and Only by Emily Griffin. 
And this one, if it was just within my own rating system for my personal self, I probably would have given this three stars rather than four because I am not really a fan of chiclet. I probably will have like one random chiclet book in every review just because I pick them up randomly. But I will say for a chiclet kind of book, I think that this was written pretty well. I kept thinking that there would be like a big twist, so I did read this pretty quickly, but there really was no big twist or anything. I found it very, very predictable, but I do think that it was well written. I do believe that this author, Emily Griffin, does quite well. It does say New York Times bestselling author. So some of you guys might be like totally into her, and I understand that if you really do like the chiclet. But just for me personally and what I like to read, I didn't absolutely love it, but if you like chiclet, you probably would like it. So for Four stars for me based on the fact that I did think it was a decent chiclet story and the writing was pretty good. Okay, now let's talk about this Harlan Coben book, which is called Home. I think I've only ever read one other book by Harlan Coben before and I don't quite get the hype. Kind of going along with that 300 Days of Summer, I think that his stories are great for like miniseries, movies, TV shows. I think that they are really wonderful for that, but I don't necessarily think he's like the best writer ever, but I know I am probably a minority in that opinion. I know obviously a lot of people really, really love Harlan Coben books. And this one was fine, but I was really surprised at like how predictable this plot was as well. And guys, like, I'm not that smart, okay? <laughs> so this was one I was expecting it to just be better than it was. And I will fully admit this book is like the last book in a very long series of books about this character, Myron Bulatar. And they are all books that can be read individually, but they have the same characters throughout. So I think that this book, since it is like one of the last ones, or maybe the very last one in this Myron Bulatar universe. It was a very nostalgic book. There was a lot of references to previous relationships, characters that probably were in the first few books in the universe and then came back up at the end. So if you read all of the other Myron Bulatar books, you probably would really like this one, but I felt like there was a very strong emphasis on the nostalgia and characters coming back rather than the actual plot of the story. And for that, I did give it four stars, kind of like the one and only. For myself, I probably would have given it more like three, but I mean, decently written book. And again, if you liked the other Myron Bulatar books, I'm sure you would absolutely love this one. I will say I really am a big fan of the Harlan Coben miniseries on Netflix. There's probably like seven or eight different miniseries based off of his books. And they're really cool too, because they're all in different languages. Most of them are in English, but there are probably at least three or four that are set in non-English speaking countries. And that's really cool. I love that they kind of market it towards all different audiences, but everyone can absolutely enjoy it with subtitles. Next in the stack of four stars is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. I can't remember if I picked this up at Goodwill or if I maybe borrowed this from my mom, so I should probably give it back to her if I did. Or maybe I bought this one, can't remember. But I actually did really enjoy this book of the ones I've reviewed so far. This was absolutely my favorite one. I did read this pretty quickly. It was very engaging. I liked the character development. I'll read the back of this one quickly for you. So the newly renovated Hotel Les Sommets, perhaps? A former sanatorium high in the Swiss Alps has long been plagued by dark rumors when Detective Ellen Warner's estranged brother, Isaac, and his fiancée, Lar, invite her to celebrate their engagement at the hotel, Ellen reluctantly accepts. Arriving in the midst of a threatening storm, Ellen immediately feels on edge, and when Lar suddenly vanishes, Ellen must trust her instincts if they hope to find her. When the snow cuts off all access to Les Sommet, the remaining guests start to panic. Then another woman disappears, and she's the only person who could have warned them of just how much danger they are all in. So I did really enjoy this book. This was a Reese's book club pick. But just in the back of my mind when I was thinking about how I would review this story, when I was finished, I was kind of comparing to like Jillian Flynn, who I feel like is just on a complete other level. And to me, if I'm giving Jillian Flynn books a five star, I mean, this just has to be a four because it's just 
not on that level at all, but I did still really enjoy this book a lot. Definitely a good weekend read, beach read if you're not into the chiclet like me. I think I did actually read that like on the beach. Okay, next we've got a story from Daphne du Maurier, I think is how you say it. And this is a collection of three books, so it's just one of the books in here. And I did review her most famous story, Rebecca, in my first review, so you can go back and listen to that review if you want. But the book that I read for this one was Frenchman's Creek, and I did like it. I didn't like it quite as much as Rebecca. Spoiler, I did rate Rebecca five stars, and I did rate Frenchman's Creek, of course, four. It was still a really fun story, though. I just like this author. You can kind of get her personality from how she writes, which I really enjoy. She probably was a little bit snarky, didn't quite fit in with her time kind of person. So I just really have enjoyed doing some research on my own about this author, Daphne du Maurier. She just seems like she was a cool chick. That's what she looks like. This is a pretty old copy. She was still alive when this particular book was released. But this book kind of tells the story of a typical woman who her whole job really is to like be the wife, take care of the children, and she just has been craving some adventure. And then a man comes into her life that gives her a little bit of that adventure. So it's a fun story. I don't think it is as good as Rebecca, but I would still definitely recommend. And then the last book that I did rate four stars was Sandra Brown's Lethal. And I actually really did like this book as well. From the back it says, when Honor Gillette's four-year-old daughter Emily informs her that a sick man is lying in their front yard, Honor rushes from her house to help him. But the sick man turns out to be Lee Coburn accused of murdering seven men in cold blood the night before. Deadly desperate and armed, he promises Honor that she and her daughter won't be hurt as long as she does as he asks. But everything changes when Honor witnesses a shocking act of brutality and makes the terrifying discovery that even those closest to her can't be trusted. So I really did like this. To me, this was a lot better actually than Harlan Coben's Home, if I'm comparing those two directly. Paced well throughout, very good character development, and this is the first in kind of like the Lee Coburn universe, and I will definitely be looking for some of his other books, either from the library or Goodwill or whatever, because I just really liked how Sandra Brown writes. This is the first book that I've read from her. And so for me, I think I do like this author a little bit better than Harlan Coben, and they do write similar kinds of books. So that's just my opinion. Definitely everybody has their own. Okay, so now for my five star books, I do have four. And seeing as how these all were new authors to me, they were surprising. I definitely have some new favorite authors in here. So again, why I love to just pick up random books. This is my first Kate Atkinson book, When Will There Be Good News? And I have read two more since I've read this. And I can affirm that excellent, excellent writer. I love her style. Her stories are good. I've really enjoyed all three that I've read. All three have gotten five stars from me. And I will absolutely be reading everything from her, <laughs> everything that she's put out so far. So this says, on a hot, beautiful day in the English countryside, six-year-old Joanna Mason witnesses a horrific crime. So kind of similar actually to that lethal story and like a kid seeing a bad thing. 30 years later, the man convicted of the crime is released from prison. 16-year-old Reggie works as a nanny for a doctor devoted to her infant son. When Dr. Hunter goes missing, Reggie, no stranger to bad luck and worse, seems to be the only person who is worried. Detective Chief Inspector Luis Monroe is also looking for a missing person, unaware that hurtling toward her is an old friend, private detective Jackson Brody himself on a journey that becomes fatally interrupted. As lives and histories intersect, as past mistakes and current misfortunes collide, Jackson and Louise both get caught up in an investigation that will call into question everything they once thought true. So this is a story where I feel like if it was written by a different person, it would not have been nearly as good, nearly as engaging to me. It was just written so, so well. She has such an excellent writing style. I just really love this author. She's definitely bumped probably into my top five favorite authors. It's a hard list, but I really, really enjoy her style and I really enjoyed this book. I also gave five stars to Diane Chamberlain's Necessary Lies, another just excellently written book. This was super interesting as well. This is some historical fiction. It's set in 1960 in North Carolina and kind of the general topic that this novel is covering is how in this time, I didn't even really know that this was a thing, that people would be sterilized if they were seen as unfit to be parents. And that could have been from a low IQ and there were issues with standardized tests at the time and really measuring intelligence and how that really affected these small rural communities 
really excellent character development in this one, would highly recommend, and I love learning something when I read novels. Of course, everything is going to be a little bit biased, but I really didn't know that much about this topic at all before I read the story, and it was just really well written, so I would definitely recommend. Okay, this one was the shock of the bunch. So again, like pretty much all of these, just a random goodwill find. This book is called The Blue Bottle Club by Penelope J. Stokes. And I think this was just probably a five stars for me. I'm sure many other people would read this and give it more of a four, I would say. I'm trying to remember back to the average Goodreads and I think that's what most people did, rate it a three or four. But this just like really hit everything for me. One, it was really well written, excellent characters, and it kind of had like a sisterhood of the traveling pants story. So it starts out, depression, 1929, these four girls are friends, they kind of get together and talk about their goals for the future and what they want to happen. And then the whole rest of the story is covering each of them separately and how their lives ended up going. And it's just super, super interesting. There is another new character who is trying to find out information about the four of them. And I just really, really love this story. Very heartwarming. I am a religious person and there's a lot of talk of God throughout, which I really did appreciate without it being shoved down the reader's throat. So this is almost like chick lit in a way mixed with historical fiction and I really just loved that combo. I really like this author's writing style as well. I'll definitely be looking up more from her. I'm not sure how many other books she's written. This was actually written in 1999 but I really liked it. Would recommend. And then last but not least I have this book The Gown and this is by Jennifer Robson and she also wrote Good Night from London. Haven't read that yet. So when I first picked this up I actually thought that it was going to be like about the royal family. Like centered on the royal family, but it was actually focused on a fictional woman who was supposed to be a seamstress for Queen Elizabeth's wedding gown. I think it was a really interesting story, a unique way to kind of talk about the time, talk about the royal family and everything without actually being about the royal family. And my favorite historical fiction novels are ones where like part of the story is set in the past and then another part is set current day and then there's like some connection and that is what happens with this story as well. So the main focus is the seamstress and then her granddaughter is in 2016 kind of trying to find out some information about her family. So I really did enjoy this one and I think you will as well if you like historical fiction and stories about families and finding information about your family and all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually really having a hard time deciding what was my ultimate favorite of this bunch. I don't know if I can pick. I really, really did enjoy all of these five-star reviewed books. Definitely the surprise was the Blue Bottle Club. Didn't think that I was going to love it as much as I did. I think overall the best written one was When Will There Be Good News by Kate Atkinson. Like I said, she's definitely one of my new favorite authors and I will be eating up everything from her. So if I had to choose, I probably would have to give it to this one, but I really, really loved all these books. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely look forward to more reviews because I've got another 10 ready to go, ready to review for you. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I will be making more cozy vlogs and content like that. So you're not just gonna be seeing me sitting in the chair the whole time. But if you did like the video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. Really will help my channel grow a lot. I really appreciate everyone who has watched so far. And let me know if you've read any of these books and if you have any recommendations for me for the future. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.